All right, welcome to another fireside chat. Um, not by the fire today because it's raining outside, but I am drinking some delicious 128 proof moonshine. So let's see how this goes. Might be a disaster. Well, anyways, drinking moonshine got me thinking about a lot of things like drag racing, NASCAR, Dukes of Hazard, and the Rebel Flag. That might sound like a series of unusual correlations, but once again, I am prepared to discuss these and why they all relate by providing you with a little bit of interesting American history. So before I get started, let me just give a caveat. This is not in any way, shape, or form a promotion or an encouragement for the use of the rebel flag, a flag that has direct correlations, of course, with the Civil War and racism. However, it's important to understand history, so we're going to talk about it. Now, if you've ever seen the show, The Dukes of Hazzard, which was a show that came out uh, when I was a young boy and I enjoyed watching thoroughly, or maybe if you're a little bit younger than me, you saw the film with uh, that guy from Jackass and Jessica Simpson. I didn't ever see the film, but there was one. Uh, essentially, The Dukes of Hazzard, well, I was going to say the main character of the show is really the car, the General Lee. But I was always a big fan of uh, Daisy, the whole Daisy Duke things. Girls, if you're wearing denim jeans and you're cutting them short into shorts, that came from Daisy Dukes. That's why they're called Daisy Dukes. You might not know that, but that actually comes from a show from the late 70s, early 80s. You're welcome. That's not what we're talking about. But anyways, let me get back to what I was talking about. The real main character of the show is the car, the General Lee, the Dodge Challenger. I think it's a challenger it might have been a charger i'm pretty sure it's a challenger i'm kind of drunk so bear with me either way it was a super sport which means it had a special engine in it we'll talk about that in a minute anyways the whole point is it's called the general lee and it has a rebel flag on top of it you might wonder why that is and you might be thinking well maybe these guys were just southern boys who were racist and love the civil war not exactly but maybe so the reality is this in the early 1900s, we know that the federal government, the United States federal government, issued prohibition, which outlawed the consumption and distribution of alcohol. Well, obviously, this was problematic because people like to drink, including me. But that didn't stop Americans from finding a way to make this happen. It was actually a uh, cooperation between a lot of people, including the people who were the makers of the alcohol, who would then distribute it. And the distribution primarily actually took place through mob contacts. This is actually the same era, the early 1900s, 1920s, when you see the emergence of a lot of mob activity. And that's for a reason. That's because a lot of these mob uh, connections, which took place in north, large northern cities, Chicago, Detroit, New York, Philadelphia, so on and so forth, mm -hmm. were actually um, bolstered up by the ability to connect with southern distributors to get alcohol into these cities, okay? And this took place largely through moonshiners. Of course, we know that the south is known for bourbon, so obviously they're making bourbon too, but moonshine is actually a very cheap um, and kind of I don't know, less... It's less aged version of bourbon. It's still a corn liquor. They basically not, you're not aging it in the same way, but it's very strong and very potent. So this is, creates moonshine culture. But the whole thing about this is this. Obviously this was completely illegal. So in order to make this happen, they had to find ways to get the alcohol where they needed to go, i.e. from the south to the north, without getting arrested and caught by the police. You've probably seen films like Smoking the Bandit and other Burt Reynolds films, Gator, the list goes on. Those are all homages to this old school culture from the early 1900s, as is really the show Dukes of Hazard. Because what happened as a result of this is drivers or moonshiners began to find ways to essentially soup up their automobiles. They would buy cars off a lot, as you would get them from an automobile manufacturer, and they would find ways to make the engines run faster and the automobiles run faster. They would also strip these vehicles down, they'd remove parts and things like that, 
particularly inside. This was not only to make the vehicles lighter, but also to find places to store the liquor. And then they would run these cars up north to deliver the illegal alcohol. And as a result, what came from this was a car culture um, and also a racing culture. Because then it became not only about the moonshine, but it was about who could make the fastest vehicle. Who could make the car that could run the fastest. Hence, drag racing. And this is also why even things like NASCAR still have a direct correlation to the Old South. Okay, NASCAR, if you don't know, is essentially supposed to be a race that is being conducted by vehicles that are vehicles you could buy off the lot, okay? It's different from like Formula One racing or something like that. Obviously, there's a lot of caveats that would need to be discussed in greater length, but we don't have time for that. So, drag racing, car culture, moonshining, Dukes of Hazard. So, let's bring it back to Dukes of Hazard. As we know, the car is known as the General Lee and it features a rebel flag. Well, why? Well, this is another part of this car culture. In order to run this liquor, and to move throughout the country, these drivers would create handles or false personas that they would adopt so that their real names were not known because they were conducting illegal activities. And because they were dramatically opposed to the um, ordinances that were being um, created in, in, um, in, in what's the word I'm looking for? Because I'm drunk. Enforced, there it is, by the federal government, to make alcohol illegal, these moonshiners essentially adopted a theme or an ideology from the Old South saying, well, we're going to essentially secede from the Union, the federal government, and become, quote unquote, rebels by distributing alcohol. And that's actually why they adopted the, quote unquote, rebel flag. Now, again, obviously, in its original state, the rebel flag was related to the Civil War and the southern states seceding from the Union over the issue of slavery. But in this case, in the 1900s, early 1900s, it was a result of the distribution and manufacturing of alcohol. So these moonshiners would take on names of who? Civil War generals, such as the General Lee. That would become their handle, and they would go by that name as they would travel the country moving moonshine. So this is why in Dukes of Hazard, the vehicle that they're driving, their moonshine car, which is a souped up, extra fast Dodge Challenger Super Sport, is called the General Lee, and it features a rebel flag on the roof. Hopefully you found that interesting. Uh, I probably drank too much moonshine, so I'm gonna end the video here. Have a great day. Show them your car, son. Um, oh. Oh, what you got there? That's a Formula One racer. There you go. Now that's a hot rod. Oh, and there's another race car. What that way?